guys, this is Echo Sonics here with another tutorial for ADSR and SilentTutorials.com. If you're not subscribed to the YouTube channel and you want to stay up to date with all of the tutorials, you can do that at youtube.com forward slash ADSR Tuts. So that was a quick demo of the sound we're making today in Silent. And you'll see two MIDI regions here. This is the actual sound we'll be recreating. This top sound, I wanted to talk about it real quick. It is a sound I use a lot to layer with sounds, especially this, uh, this tutorial is about like this pre-drop kind of lead. Um, one of the main things I'll be talking about in this tutorial is how to how to have an instrument that's big, like let's say this was your, your section leading into your drop, but it's not so big that it takes away from the actual drop. Well, this sound on its own, the main sound right here, it's kind of thin, like with the drums. And a trick that a lot of producers will do when they're building into their drop is they may take out the bass or they may filter out with like a with like an EQ or an automation. They might take out some of the low end frequency on the bass when the drop comes in and the bass is there, it sounds bigger than life. So with this sound, it sounds kind of thin and I wouldn't typically use it in a production on its own. But it is a really cool sound, it's just it's not going to accent the difference between my sections. So the sound right here, which is what I just pulled up in silence. <laughs> is a really generic basic sound that I'll, I'll tend to layer with a lot of different synths, whether it's in Silent or uh, Massives or any, any VST basically. So all it is, you can just take a snapshot of the screen, you can recreate it. It's just one part, it's just one oscillator. I'm using a saw wave, I have four voices, I send it through a low pass filter, keep the cutoff where it is, about halfway, and then in modulation envelope one, I select cutoff A, B, or cutoff A, whichever one you want, and then give it some decay, sustain, and release, and you get this kind of really full body sound. And then I'll EQ it depending on the sound I'm layering it with. So with this one, it's, it has a lot of high end. So, you know, it, I kind of boosted it to match it to kind of, so it doesn't stick out as noticeably, but it definitely adds a lot to the sound. Like I'll play both together now, and then I'll, I'll uh, mute the top one. It's a really subtle blend, but it really helps cut through with the actual drums. So now that I talked about that sound, I have a new instance of Silent already pulled up right here. And we're going to start making that main sound because that's the hard one to make. That top one's really easy. It's just a saw wave through a low pass four filter. So I'm going to boost the voices from three to five because I was playing chords with it. I'm going to keep it on a saw wave for oscillator A1. And I'm going to give it eight voices. I'm going to uncheck retrig so it's not as consistent of a sound. The detune, I'm going to I'm going to turn up to about four. So I'm spreading out some voices here, making it a little bit thicker. And this is what we have so far. All right, and moving just kind of left to right here. We're, for the sustain, I'm going to take the sustain down just a little bit um, on the... It was it's default to 10. I'm going to take it to like 9.5. And on the release, let's give it some release. I'm going to take it up to about 3.7. All right, now for oscillator A2, I'm going to select um, a triangle wave instead of a saw wave. And voices, I'm going to crank that up to 8 as well. And I'm going to uncheck retrig, just like I did with oscillator A1. And I'm going to give it 4.05 voices of, I mean, sorry, of detune. Uh, so just a little, a hair more than oscillator A A1. So let's hear that now. Okay, so now I'm going to select part B, and in part B, my oscillator B1 is actually going to be my noise oscillator. So I'm going to turn that all the way to the uh, noise voice. I'm going to give it one voice. I'm going to un, I'm going to keep retrig check. So the other two uncheck, keep this retriggered, and then just turn the volume down so it's not as loud. I'm just trying to give it some top end and kind of shine through the mix a little. And now let's make sure that we give this part B some release too to match the um, release on part A. Otherwise, the noise doesn't ring out with the whole sound. So I'm going to shake it up to about 3.7 again. All right, and oscillator B2, I'm going to pitch it up by a whole octave. And I'm going to select a, uh, make sure you keep it, or select a saw wave. And we're going to uncheck retrig, and we're just going to give this four voices. 
And what I'm going to do with the detune is I'm going to do something similar to what I did with uh, oscillator A1. I'm going to give it about four. So turn that detune up to around four. But we're mainly using this oscillator B2 to introduce some octave element, like an octave into the actual sound. So now that we got the um, oscillator set up, let's go back to part A. And on the filter type for part A, I'm going to select a low pass filter. So let's drag that up one. And for the cutoff, I'm just going to boost it a little, uh, boost the resonance to about just a hair, just about 1.05. So let's turn this back down. I bump my mouse. About 1.05 would be good. And on the drive, we're going to do a similar thing, just a little bit of drive, maybe about to about 1.7 or just a hair under two. This is what we have so far. <laughs> All right, now I'm going to bounce back to part B, and I'm going to set up the filter for part B. And what I'm going to select for the uh, filter for part B is the bandpass, which I'll do pretty off, fairly often when I'm using noise. It kind of let, lets through a lot of high end, which sounds good. So I'm going to keep the cutoff at halfway. I'm going to keep it at, it should be by default, 146.16 hertz. The resonance, I'm going to keep it zero. And then I'm going to give a little bit of drive. So I'm just going to do about one and a half, maybe, around there. <laughs> And now I'm going to turn down this master cutoff, and so it's going to kill a bulk, the bulk of the sound. I'm going to turn it to about 1.46 hertz. The reason I'm doing that is I'm going to bring, I'm going to reintroduce that filter, but in a more controlled way by using the modulation envelopes. So now that we have the oscillator set up for both part A and part B, uh, the filter for part A and part B, I am now going to go to the modulation envelope section. I'm going to select cut off A and B because we're using both of those for the sound. I'm going to crank this little mod wheel up to 10. So crank it up all the way because we killed a big part of the sound with that cutoff. And then I'm going to introduce some a sound back into it. So I'm going to turn the decay up to about 3.62. <laughs> and I'm going to turn the sustain up to about 4.7. I'm going to turn the release up to about 4.02, 4.05, same thing that we kind of did with the detunes, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, with the releases in part A and part B, so it's a similar um, effect. All right, and now in modulation envelope 2, I'm going to select pitch A and B, and I'm going to use this to kind of introduce some snappiness to it. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to boost this decay by about 0.23. And then you have to turn up, make sure you turn up your uh, this knob here. I'm going to turn it up to 10. And then I'm also going to select cut off A and B again for that. And I'm going to turn that up to 10 as well. All right, cool. So let's go on to the effects. Uh, in the I used phaser to kind of thicken it up. So center frequency spread, the left, the left right offset should all be where it is by default, and you can keep the width where it is. The LFO rate, though, I'm going to take down to uh, 8 over 1D, so it's as slow as it can possibly go. The LFO gain, I'm just going to do about 0.10, maybe just a hair higher, so 0.14. And then the feedback, I'm going to have at, I'm going to turn that down to just a sliver above um, 0. And the dry wet, I'm going to turn down fairly low as well. I'm going to turn it down to about 15, 12, 15%. Just adding a little bit of thickness to the sound. Now I'm going to go to my EQ, and in the EQ, I'm going to make sure it's selected on one pole for this specific sound. And the bass frequency, I'm going to turn down to 49.81 hertz. It's carving a little bit of that out. And the treble, I'm going to keep at 7.5, and I'm going to turn the treble frequency down to 2,945. So just turn down a little bit. All right, and now going on to the delay, and you can of course add delay and reverb third party if you want. Um, for this, the, the delay time, I'm going to select 1 over 8 for the, the left, and for the right, I'm going to select 1 over 8 as well, so they, they're matching. And the low cut, I'm going to boost the low cut a little bit just to take some of the low frequencies out, and I'm also going to boost the high cut. Make sure you keep it selected on ping pong. 
And smear, I'm going to keep down, but spread, make sure you leave up halfway, so we're spreading out a little bit of the sound. Feedback, I'm going to keep at 50%, width at 50%, and then the dry wet, I'm going to turn down to about 40%. So you kind of get that type of delay. All right, and then I'm going to activate the reverb and just add some reverb to taste. So turn the size down a little. All right, so there's that sound. Let me insole it. And then bringing it back in with that one lead I told you about at the beginning, that really simple saw sound. And that is pretty much the sound, guys. Uh, it's a good sound for your pre-drops in, in your EDM track. So if you have any questions or comments, let me know below, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And as always, thanks for watching. If you haven't checked out SilentTutorials.com, head on over there. Tons of cool things, Silent, and I'll see you next time.